Hey Pew Crew, welcome back. We are here just outside of Universal Studios and in today's video we are going to talk about the top 8 must do things when you visit the parks, especially if you're a first timer. Now these items are going to be something that everyone will enjoy, but if it's your first time in the park, you need to prioritize it. So this first one is near and dear to our hearts. Anytime you're on Universal property, this is something you need to be doing. It doesn't matter if it's your first time or your 37th time, <laughs> you have to do this. Yeah, you guessed it. It's visit the Wizarding World and get a butterbeer. There are actually three different kinds of butterbeer drinks in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Of course, they have the regular butterbeer, which is like a soda. Our favorite is the frozen butterbeer. And then they also have a hot butterbeer. The regular and the frozen you can get pretty much anywhere that sells food or drinks in the Wizarding World. But with the hot butterbeer, you can't get it at the butterbeer carts over in Hogsmeade. G give, give me that. <laughs> no, seriously. Like we said, this is our favorite, but there's more than just the drinks in the Wizarding World. You can get fudge, uh, potted cream, and they even have a soft serve and a hard, I don't know, hard serve. They have ice cream. The soft serve ice cream is one of the best things you can get in the parks, period. Also, just coming to the Wizarding World is a must. There's so much to see and do here. Even if you're not a fan of the series, you can have an absolute blast and explore for hours. And I'll take that back now. Uh, a little pro tip with the frozen butterbeer in particular. When you get it, it won't look like this. It'll have like the white cream on the top and then it'll be like a more brown color. But we suggest stirring that topping in because it is really, really sweet. And it just makes the whole drink taste better better if you stir it in. So definitely do that before you start chugging on your frozen butterbeer. Butterbeer just barely scrapes the surface of all the things you can see and do in the Wizarding World. There's all kinds of great food options like the cauldron cake is one of our favorites. Oh yeah. But this next thing on the list it's almost like a rite of passage at Universal. <laughs> the second thing on our list is Experience E.T. Adventure. This ride was here when Universal Studios opened in 1990, and it is the only original attraction that's left. Like Tyler said, this is almost like a rite of passage at this point because it takes you back in time. This is one of those attractions that we ride every single time that we visit the parks. A lot of times it's the first attraction that we get on. If this is your first time visiting, it's kind of a must do because you get to sort of relive the story of Universal Studios. This is like kind of where it began and then you get to venture out into the parks and see like how the parks have advanced, like how ride technology and all that has changed. Also, a lot of people give E.T. a lot of flack because yeah. it is so old and they talk about how- oh, I want it gone. <laughs> or they want it refurbed, but like we love how nostalgic E.T. Yeah, is. Yeah, that's the perfect way to describe it. It's just like pure nostalgia. <laughs> it's just one ride. Like, I know that there could be something new or they may be able to do something with this land, but having like an old original attraction, I guarantee anybody that kind of doesn't want it around right now would regret it when it was gone. Like, they would miss it. But let's go jump on this thing. Welcome home, you arrived. <laughs> Welcome home. E.T. was fun as always, but as we make our way out here to the next item on our list, we did want to mention that there is a little pro tip for E.T. that seasoned veterans know, but people new to the parks may not know. When you're riding it, do not, and I repeat, do not look Magdal in the eye. Trust me, just trust me. Do not make eye contact with Magdal. This next thing on our list isn't actually in either one of the parks. Uh, it's what connects them, but you may be familiar with this area. And if you aren't, the third item on our list is exploring City Walk. There are so many things to do and see in City Walk, but it's probably best known for its restaurants. There are 11 sit-down restaurants here and over 20 total places to eat. Yeah, we get comments all the time about people who just aren't necessarily excited about the food options inside the parks. Right. We think there's a wide variety, but they can be hard to find. The great thing about City Walk is its proximity to the parks. Like they, It's a two to three minute walk 
from the parks, if that. Like, yeah. it, it's honestly probably just like 20 or 30 seconds. <laughs> you just gotta walk across the bridge. But if you can't find something that you're looking for in the parks, we can almost guarantee that you can fulfill your needs out here in City Walk. City Walk is not only home to those restaurants, but you can also get all the merchandise that you want or need out here as well. Like, just because you leave the parks doesn't mean the merchandise ends. As well as there's a lot of other things to see and do here, like Anna was saying. They've got putt-putt, they've got a cinema, they've even got some nightclubs. I think some of them are shut down right now, but we are excited to see what they are going to update those with. As we're making our way over here to Islands of Adventure, we also wanted to mention in that Universal Studios store in CityWalk, they do have some exclusive Harry Potter merch. So that's definitely something to be aware of. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, you need to check that out. The next thing on our list is taking advantage of early park admission. Early park admission gets you access to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter an hour before the parks open to daytime guests. Currently, early park admission is here in Islands of Adventure, but it does bounce back and forth between Islands of Adventure and Studios. Yeah, and if you catch it just right, like busier times of the year, it will be at both <laughs> Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, which is always nice because you can kind of choose where you are at for that day. Before we go on, I did want to make like a quick correction, and not really a correction, just <laughs> clarifying something. She said access to the Wizarding World. You get access to like the park uh, when it's in Islands, Velocicoaster's open right. as well. And there, when it's in Studios, there's a couple of rides over there, like Minions is open. When uh -huh. Mummy's not down for refurbishment, yeah. it's open sometimes. But like the Wizarding World is like the main draw, right. I guess, to it. That's kind of what they advertise as early park admission. And the biggest benefits to early park admission is the extremely low crowd yeah. levels. And one of the really nice things is that express passes don't work. There are no express lines for any rides during early park admission. So if you don't have express, this is a really great chance for you to get into the park super early and take advantage of these basically non-existent wait times. And if you're wondering how you get access to early park admission, it's not like an add-on to your ticket or anything like that, but there are two ways that you can get access to it, and we are big advocates for both. The first one is to buy an annual pass. If you want to guarantee yourself early park admission year-round, you will have to buy one of the top two tier annual passes, but they do give you early park admission, and if you've already purchased your tickets, don't worry. You can always upgrade your ticket to an annual pass, and you might be surprised at how little the price difference is or it might even save you some money. The second way that you can get access to early park admission is actually the next thing on our list and that's staying at an on-site hotel. There are all kinds of benefits that come with staying at one of Universal's resorts like early park admission. You also have room key charging privileges. There are transportation options to get you to and from the parks and the hours always perfectly match up with the park and city walk hours. And with the three premier resorts, you even get free unlimited express passes. Yeah, we also love staying on site because of the convenience and the proximity to the parks. Like, Universal gets some flack about how small this whole, like, resort is. Yeah. But we think it's kind of a benefit. We can walk from almost every hotel that they have and get to the parks in under 15 minutes. Also, we don't have to bring a car. Like, you don't have to have all this extra stuff. It's a great way for us to save money because we just Uber from the airport. And then we never leave the resorts once we get here because everything that we need because of things like City Walk and the hotel, all of their amenities, we have it right here. We also love that Universal has hotels that match every budget. They've yeah. opened up several hotels in the last few years. And so if you're looking to stay at like a really nice resort, the premier hotels are there for you, but they also have some budget friendly options that you're just really not gonna find a better deal than. The next item on the list will probably come as no surprise to some of you <laughs> who are more familiar with the channel and that is to enjoy some of the themed food. And we're gonna get one of our favorites in green eggs and ham. Green Eggs and Ham is one of our favorite quick service restaurants in Islands of Adventure. It's honestly probably our favorite quick service restaurant. Yeah. Uh, but we went ahead and got the Who Hash from yeah. Green Eggs and Ham. We have tried all of their different offerings and they're all absolutely fantastic. But a little bit of a pro tip with the Who Hash, it's supposed to come in this little Dr. Seuss Who Hash can, but you can ask for it in a plate yeah. so that the can is clean for you to take home. Yeah. Awesome. So if we were over in studios, we would 100% be getting the crepes, oh, but we, yeah. we had a crepe <laughs> yesterday. We haven't had the tots 
on this trip. So we figured we'd go ahead and get our favorite over here in islands. <laughs> Always good. This is one of our first recommendations for anybody that's visiting the parks. Like anytime someone's like, hey, where should we eat? It's like, oh, go to Green Eggs and Ham mm -hmm. uh, in Seuss Landing. And then you need to check out Central Park Crepes over in Studios. They're just always, like, we've never had a bad experience at either one. No, they're fantastic, but we did want to kind of put out a you word of you caution. Just, you just talk, I'll eat. <laughs> um, this is still theme park food. Like, we had someone recently tell us that they were disappointed in the crepes because so many people talk them up so much. But, I mean, you or not the crepes, then the tots. Because you have to think about the fact that it's just tots with cheese and, and some meat on them. Like, yeah. It's not gourmet food, so. Yeah, you don't have like, some, like you're not going to like a Michelin star <laughs> restaurant. Like, they, yeah. they don't have like two Michelin stars over here at Green Eggs and Ham. It's it's theme park food. Right. But it's good for, it's good theme park food. Uh, it's fantastic. Speaking of Michelin stars, why is a tire company handing out <laughs> food awards? Honestly. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with video. It just hit me. Every once in a while, people ask us, like, which one's our favorite? Uh, for me, personally, it's the buffalo chicken tots yeah. uh, here at Green Eggs and Ham. And then, of course, I love that brisket crepe over there at Central Park Crepes. Oh. Like, it's the best. Yeah, that brisket crepe is 100% the best. That's going to be my favorite crepe as well. And then as far as tots go, I really love the pizza tots. It's just hard to go wrong with them. And yeah. if you're a fan of HHN, it's the closest you can get to pizza fries when it's not spooky season. After finishing up those delicious tots, the next thing on the list has to be try something new. So I know that we're standing under Velocicoaster, but we're not saying that you have to ride Velocicoaster or do anything that you're necessarily too uncomfortable with, but we do think that you should push the envelope. Like, try something that you haven't ever done before. Maybe it's a new food. Maybe it is a ride. Maybe it is Velocicoaster. Velocicoaster is a great roller coaster, one of the best in the world in our opinion, but we just think you should take your theme park vacation as an opportunity to do something and experience something that you've never experienced before. But I mean, we are right here by Velocicoaster. We might as well do the newest attraction. There's not really anything new we can experience right now in the parks, but we can experience the newest attraction like I just said. Let's go do that. <laughs> to fix the buns after that velocicoaster uh, can definitely be a little bit rough on your hair oh but, yeah yeah <laughs> but the last thing on our list is to buy yourself some merchandise it doesn't matter what you're a fan of whether it's harry potter or marvel island maybe you love minions or even men in black universal has a merchandise line for literally everything we're standing out here under the castle just outside of filch's emporium which of course is what we think is one of the best places to get yourself some merchandise but especially if this is your first trip you just want to have something to commemorate it you want to have something that you can take home and remember this trip by because we can guarantee that you are going to love universal and have the best time on your trip here anymore some of our favorite merchandise is edible shocker <laughs> right like that cauldron cake that we mentioned earlier yeah we went ahead and grabbed us one of those <laughs> and we're gonna get on the hogwarts express while we enjoy that there's sort of like a ninth thing that you want to make sure that you do whether you are new to the parks or if you've been coming for a long time always remember to have fun guys like seriously i know that sounds like cliche or something like that but we have to remind ourselves we come so much sometimes we get wrapped up in like trying to make sure that it's a perfect day or something like that just go with the flow have a good time always make sure that you're having fun in the parks but with that, we are going to end today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know what is something that you think you have to do the first time that you visit Universal. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.